Hi, I'm Mark, and this is my journey through tarot. Come on. This one's going to be about Prince Andrew. You know, when he was younger, he was known as Randy Andy. So, uh, Prince Andrew, let's see uh, how he's doing right now and how he's going to fare with all the allegations and the bad stuff that's come his way. Poor Randy Andy. Okay, so today I'm going to tell you a little bit that I found out about Prince Andrew. You know, I always get this stuff from uh, Wikipedia. So, how accurate it is, I don't know. But uh, just to clue you in, here's a little short uh, from birth to now, uh, really fast, on Prince Andrew by the year. So, in 1960, Prince Andrew was born in the Belgian suite of Buckingham Palace on February 19th. He's the third child and the second son of Queen Elizabeth II. At Buckingham Palace, he was looked after by a governess responsible for his early education. Later, he was sent to Heatherton, Heatherton? Heatherton School near Ascot in Berkshire. Uh, 1973, the 13-year-old prince at that time entered Gordonston in northern uh, Scotland. And uh, 1977, Prince Andrew spent six months participating in an exchange program to Lakefield College School in Canada. At 1979, at 19 years of age, he left Gordonston and enrolled at the Naval Aca uh, College of Flight and served in the Royal Navy as a helicopter pilot and in, later instructor, uh, later also as the captain of a warship during the Falklands War. Now, 1981, the 21-year-old Andrew met and dated American actress, photographer, Ku Stark. Yeah, so that was a big controversy uh, between um, Ku Stark and uh, Andy. But uh, anyway, so in 1982, uh, Ku and Andrew took a holiday together on the island of Mustique. And uh, in 1982 also is when Argentina invaded the Falkland Islands, leading to the Falklands War. And the possibility of the prince being killed in action made the British government apprehensive, but the queen insisted he remain with his ship. Now, Ku and Andrew split up under pressure from the press, the paparazzi, and the palace. You know, just like today, and this is 1983. In 1985, Prince Andrew, who had known Sarah Ferguson since childhood, became they became reacquainted uh, at uh, Royal Ascot. And then in 1986, a 26-year-old Andrew married Sarah at Westminster Abbey and was created then uh, Duke of York. Uh, they have two daughters, Princess Beatrice and Eugenie. Now in 1992, the couple separated amicably. Uh, 1996, after 10 years, they divorced, and they share custody of the two daughters. Sarah continued to live at Andrew's home in Sunning Hill Park. In 1997, Andrew became godfather to actress Ku Stark's daughter. Hmm. And 19, no, this is now that we go to 2004. He moved to the Royal Lodge. You know, this is where uh, Prince Philip spent the last uh, uh, bit of his life at Royal Lodge. But he moved to Royal Lodge. Uh, his lease is for 75 years, and the Crown Estate is landlord. There's no annual tenancy charge. And in 2007, Sarah purchased Dolphin House, which is a mansion directly beside Royal Lodge. Then in 2008, hmm, a fire hmm, at Sarah's Dolphin House resulted in her moving into Royal Lodge with Andrew. Now we go to back to 2008. We've got the Sunday Times reported that for the Duke of York's public roles, he received 436,000 pounds to cover expenses. He served as Britain's uh, special representative for international trade and investment for 10 years. Uh, 2010, the Kazakhstan president's billionaire son-in-law paid Andrew's representatives 15 million pounds for his Surrey mansion, Sunning Hill Park, which was 3 million pounds over the asking price, uh, and they arranged this via some offshore companies. In 2010, Andrew uh, spent 620,000 pounds. Yes, yeah, spent 620,000 pounds as a trade envoy, including 154,000 pounds on hotels, food, and hospitality, and 465,000 pounds on travel. Sarah was secretly filmed in 2010. This is the controversy. Sarah was secretly filmed receiving 40,000 
dollars uh, cash as a cash down payment for plans that Andrew later would meet uh, that donor and pass on useful top level business contacts for a total sum of 500,000 pounds. Now in 2011, he's called uh, Air Miles Andy. So he's gone on from Randy Andy, now that he's a little older, now he's Air Miles Andy, uh, by the, uh, 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 let's see, what is it? Uh, the Daily Telegraph, regarding reimbursement he received for air travel expense we just talked about. Uh, 2011, Sarah's multi-million pound debts had been cleared by intervention of Andrew, whom she compared to a knight in, uh, a, on a white charger, a knight on a white charger. 2012, it was reported that Swiss and Italian police investigated a trust believed to have paid how many pounds? Six million pounds towards the purchase of Andrew's Sunning Hill mansion, which appeared derelict. A uh, palace uh, spokesman said this was a private sale between two trusts and no impropriety on the part of Andrew. 2012, a former Downing Street aide claimed that the Duke commented, commented if you'll pardon the expression, there's a N-word in the woodpile. I'm not going to say the word, but you may be familiar with the expression. Um, 2015, when Andrew faced accusations over his connection to Jeffrey Epstein, actress Koo Stark, man, she keeps it in his life, came to his defense. Well, I guess he is godfather uh, of her daughter. But uh, Koo Stark uh, came to his defense. And then in 2016, the Daily Mail alleged that the Duke had brokered a deal for a Greek and Swiss consortium to secure a 385 million pound contract to build water and sewage networks in two of Kazakhstan's largest cities. And as a British trade envoy, Andrew stood to gain a four million pound payment in commission. Uh, Andrews uh, succeeded to patron, oh, I guess he succeeded as patron uh, of the Royal Fine Art Commission Trust in 2019 uh, at 59 years now. His public duties were suspended for the foreseeable future following a television interview concerned with sexual abuse and connections to convicted sex offender Jeffrey Epstein. Now, 2020, Andrew permanently resigned from all public roles. Uh, U.S. authorities had filed a mutual legal assistance request to the U.K. to formally interrogate Andrew. Andrew was not invited to major celebrations of his father's 100th birthday and was included as little as possible. Remember, the, uh, the Duke uh, at that time was um, living at Royal Lodge, which Andrew was supposed to have had a 75-year lease on from way back when. But anyway, so uh, he was not invited to major uh, celebrations of his father's 100th birthday and, but, and was included as little as possible. And Andrew, the Duke of York, receives, this I guess is pretty current, 249,000 pounds annually from mom, the queen. Oh, say so. This is a grand, or tarot grand lux, tarot grand lux, another Cairo Marchetti uh, deck. This guy is just a machine putting out these cards, but they come in a great box and uh, they've got a really useful uh, guidebook as far as the divination is concerned. It's easy to read, and, you know, handheld and, you know, it's just another of uh, Cairo Marchetti's version of uh, tarot cards, which all seem to be pretty cool. Um, they're easy to use and they've got a nice kind of a matte finish that doesn't slide out of your hands too easily. And uh, so I do this so you get a chance to look at the cards and see how they are. Maybe you don't uh, buy a lot of cards or look at a lot of different cards, but watch my channel, you do. <laughs> so there we go. Good way to get to your energy all over, the, all over them, and um, and so I don't know. I think that kind of makes for a better uh, read uh, when everything's all said and done. So here we go. These uh, tarot grand lux. It's some funny thing that I always want to say grand lux tarot, and um, I bet everybody does that. But anyway, we'll use these and get this going. So this is interesting. Poor Randy Andy, Air, Air Miles Andy. My goodness. You know, everybody thinks that the uh, scandals that we hear about the royals uh, now uh, are, are all new. This has never happened. But, you know, you can go back, you know, hundreds of years, hundreds of years, and there's royal scandals. And um, so it's nothing new. I mean, they live lives just like the rest of us. The only thing is the, the naughty things that we do. Uh, isn't on television and published in newspapers and uh, hopefully and used against us and we kind of slip under the radar and get to redefine our lives. Don't tell me 
a lot of you haven't done what I just said. But, um, so let's see, what's in the cards for Andy? What's in the cards for Prince Andrew? Oh boy, what a life. Um, I suppose the deal now is uh, the uh, Jeffrey Epstein sex scandal with uh, Ghislaine Maxwell and uh, this young woman. Good heavens, what a mess. So let's see, will Andrew, will Prince Andrew actually, let's say, will he actually testify in court? That's the first uh, part of this. Will Prince Andrew actually testify in court in any way at all, either in person or via uh, film or, um, you know, a written testimony that's submitted? Will Prince Andrew testify in court uh, regarding this uh, Epstein scandal? We're going to take six cards right off the top. So this is going to be one, two, three, four, five, and then six. Put these to the side for just a little bit because, of course, uh, we're going to have to finish this full Celtic cross off with another four cards. So the signifier card, Andrew, Prince Andrew, will he testify in any way whatsoever uh, regarding this new uh, sex scandal? Signifier card for this? Ooh, this is not good. This is the Ten of Swords. <clears throat> well, it could be two things. Ten of Swords is typically, you know, signifies the end of a cycle. So we could be saying here, well, no, he's not going to testify. This is the end of that. That's not going to go forward. Or what it looks like to me is that, yeah, he's going to get stabbed in the back. This is going to be the end of innocence, if there was ever innocence, for poor uh, Andy. The challenge to that, then is going to be the two of coins. Ah, yeah, of course it is. The two of coins is, is balancing. It's a balancing act, trying to keep the, the balls up in the air and, um, and yeah, and, and keeping things on an even keel. And look at this guy. He's got the two coins that he's trying to juggle while he's walking on a tight wire. And, you know, there was some reference to Andrew, a puppet of Andrew, in the, this uh, information I looked up, and look, look at this. So very interesting. Stabbed in the back, ten of swords, uh, challenged by keeping things balanced with the two of coins. The uh, base of this reading for Will Andrew um, have to testify is the king of wands. You know, wands, huh, this doesn't look good because wands are action, motion, power, forward plans. And uh, the king of wands, you know, it could, again, could be taken two ways. And Andrew is pretty much in charge of what's going on here. He's the king of, of what's going on in his uh, little world. Or, since this is the base of the reading, this could be the plans that were leading up to perhaps him testifying. So let's see how it comes out. The past of this reading for Andrew, will he testify, is the King of Cups. So this is compassion. You know, the King of Cups, he's had, he's had compassion in the past to some extent. Um, and so this could uh, be that uh, there's some consideration given to the fact that he's uh, part of this royal family with all these issues. Maybe not. But uh, in the sky of this reading, then, the best you can hope for here is the Five of Swords. And, you know, the Five of Swords is kind of um, um, feeling uh, uh, misused or, or uh, what do they call it, like an abuse of power. Ah, abuse of power. That sounds about right. It seems like the best he can hope for is to abuse the authority he seems to be imbibed with, the power that seems to come with being part of the monarchy. Um, so this could be his saving grace, this Five of Swords. Uh, but then the likely outcome of whether he will testify in any fashion whatsoever huh, is the fool. Very interesting. So we've got the end of a cycle here in this Ten of Swords and then the beginning of a cycle here in this uh, fool. And um, I hate to say it. I mean, the fool sounds pretty uh, accurate for the r foolish life that he's uh, carved out for himself. And it could be the beginning of some other cycle that's going to happen. Wow, that's interesting. Can't wait to see what these last four cards say. So the self, this is the real self, self, self of Andrew, Prince Andrew, right now. What is he the Duke of? I've forgotten what his dukedom is. But uh, Prince Andrew, right now, um, what's going on with him? This is strength. Okay, I get it. Yeah, he's going to have to hold on. He's going to have to have strength and um, to try to weather the storm. And look at this, these, these, uh, this uh, woman in this uh, uh lion here. They're really facing into the storm. You can see the, the leaves being blown about, the hair is uh, brushed back. So yeah, this is a uh, strength. But uh, what's that in the environment of? The strength for Andrew is in the environment of the King of Swords. This truth and justice. So yeah, it's a stormy ride and it all has to do with truth and justice. So 
That's what we're dealing with here. Truth and justice is challenging. He's in the environment of that with his strength. So the hopes and the fears for him in this regard would be the eight of wands issues coming at you fast and furious. A lot of things happen, uh, bursting out at you. That is amazing. Uh, sometimes these readings are so on point. And, uh, and then the uh, likely outcome of all of this for Andrew regarding will he testify is the Queen of Swords. So truth keeps coming back up here. And it looks like the women are going to be in charge of what happens here. So I'm going to say it doesn't look perfect for poor Andrew right now. You know, that's just amazing to me how these cards come out. So we started out with Andrew with the Ten of Swords. I mean, really stabbed in the back. I mean, really challenged. And that's the end of a cycle. Ten of Swords is, is, is the coming to the, the finish of something. And uh, the uh, challenge to that then was uh, the Two of Coins, you know, getting everything balanced exactly right on that type rope, tight tightrope? Yeah, tightrope. Um, so there we go. Um, the uh, basis of that then was this King of Wands, which uh, you could say maybe uh, Andrew has been, you know, um, in charge of the plan, or trying to be in charge anyway, of the planning of this whole thing to keep his distance. Um, the uh, past was then the uh, King of Cups, a little compassion for the uh, monarchy perhaps, not necessarily Andrew. And then the sky of that was this Five of Swords, which is just, you know, an abuse of power. And if, if he's not abusing his authority and his power, I mean, I don't know what you call it. Um, the likely outcome of the whole thing is interesting because we have this 10, which is the end of a cycle, and then we have this uh, fool, which is the beginning of a cycle. And a fool, for me, kind of adequate, adequately describes the way this fellow has lived his life with all this privilege. Um, for himself, though, right now, we found strength. And was it strength challenged by what was in the environment of? Environment of, can't speak today. It was in the environment of the King of Swords, truth, justice, law. Yeah. And uh, the hopes and the fears, everything coming at you with this Eight of Wands, boom, it explodes uh, right in his face almost. And then the likely outcome, I love it, is this Queen of Swords. So this could be the justice for the women uh, who may have been wronged. So it doesn't look that good for uh, Andrew eventually, I think. I'm Mark, my journey through tarot. Tomorrow's another day. Stop by. We'll do it again. Ciao for now.